in this world. It's a famine that the prophet Amos spoke about when he said this in Amos 8, verse 11. Behold, the day is come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor of thirst for water, but of hearing the words right. of the Lord. Amen. There are too many Joel Osteens that's not feeding people the Word of God. There is a famine of the Word of God. And I made a promise to God a long time ago when He first called me to preach. I said, God, if you've called me to preach, I will preach. The whole counsel of God. I'll not leave nothing out. I don't care if it hits me right between the eyes. I'll still preach. Amen. 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 And all you who know me know very well yes, that I'll preach to myself just as well as I'll preach to anybody else Amen. in this building. Amen. You know that. I've busted my hide many a time in this pulpit. I've smelled hide burning and it's been my own. I don't mind it. See, if you believe one of two things about the situation our world is in today, you either believe the primary problem in our world is physical in nature and therefore can be solved with physical means, or you believe the primary problem in the world today is spiritual and can only be solved with spiritual means. I submit to you today that you could feed every person on this earth three square meals a day for the rest of their lives. Put a car in every garage and a turkey in every oven and you would still not solve the problems of war, rape, murder, violence, and terrorism. You want to know why? Because those are not physical problems. They are spiritual problems. If people got their hearts right with God, there would be no war. There would be no rape. There would be no murder. But because people have spiritual problems and their heart is not right with God, that's why we have war and rape and murder and terrorism in this world today. Spiritual problems. Listen as we continue the story. Verse 26 27a. And as the king of Israel was passing by upon the wall, there cried a woman unto him, saying, Help, my lord, O king. He said, If the Lord do not help thee, whence shall I help thee? You know what that's saying? Even the king recognize that there are some problems that only God can solve. Think about their situation. Money was no help. They couldn't buy their way out. Influence was no help. They didn't have any. The government certainly didn't help because they was part of the problem. And I'm persuaded to believe that a lot of our problems in America is because of our stupid government who wants to take God out of everything Amen. and let these idiots from Allah come in. No wonder America's in the shape today. You're right, brother. You're right. Education was no help. The more they learned about their situation, the less they wished they knew. What they needed more than anything else was a word from God and help from God. And guess what? <coughs> they didn't have either one. Either one. I'm going to close right here. And then I'll pick up the rest tonight. This is a fabulous story, folks. But I want to ask you this question. Are you aware of the people around you who are left behind? Are you aware of the people around you who are hungry 
and desperate and need the one thing that only God can give through the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you aware of that? Do you realize that behind the houses in your neighborhood that you drive by every day are people who are hungry and starving and who desperately needs God's grace and His forgiveness. Are you aware of that? Are you aware of the people who are in your workplace? Maybe they work behind you. Maybe they work in front of you. Maybe they work beside you on each side. Do you realize that some of those people are living lives of desperation? They need help. Are you aware of that? Are you aware when you go out and eat with your family or your friends that even though their bellies may be full, their hearts are totally empty and they are being left behind? Are you aware of that? Well, sure I am, Richard. Well then, what are you going to do about it? That's right, bro. Did you see this desperate situation here? And I've got two more questions <coughs> tonight. <coughs> this is the easiest one. Wait till you hear the other two questions. But you got to come back tonight and get it. Good way to get you back. Now, if you're not concerned, don't come back. If you don't care, don't come back. If you don't, if you could care less whether the son's left behind and hungry and starving to death, don't show back up tonight. It's quiet now, isn't it? <laughs> Heard you, you just look red off my candy. Good. <laughs> Good. Glad somebody did, because you sure ain't eating it. <laughs> but you know this. I know that sounded mean, but that came from a pastor's heart that loves you beyond measure. I want you to know that. Are you aware of the people around you who are left behind? Here are these.